Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and you're joining me today for our next video on bivariate data analysis. And today I'm gonna to be taking you through our second complex unfamiliar question. Now this video is dedicated to Seamus who complained about my previous bivariate data video saying that the food looked too delicious and it was distracting to him and he couldn't stop thinking about food for the whole video. Well, I'm sorry Seamus, I've got another cake picture for you here and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's look at our question. Firstly, Amy has a catering business and she wants to investigate if there's a linear relationship between the size of a party and the time it takes to clean up afterwards. And perhaps this cake was at her party. She takes a sample of last month's parties and notes the following. Different times for cleanup and different size parties that she catered. And she wants to know if we can develop a model for the relationship and comment on its reliability to make predictions for a party of 200 people and then determine if the model that we've developed adequately describes a linear relationship. Now, this is what we would consider to be a complex, unfamiliar question or even just a complex question. The reason for that is, is that we're not told how to solve the problem. So we need to unpack for ourselves what this question is actually asking for us and then determine what we need to do to create an adequate solution. So in Queensland, you would find this probably in paper two for your external exams. And if you're in Western Australia, this would be one of your calculator assumed exams. So firstly, if we look at part A, it says to develop a model and I've highlighted the key words here in red. Now, I like following Polly as problem solving process. See, plan, do, check. And this is part of the seeing part is reading the language of the question and understanding what it's asking you to do. Now, when it says develop a model, that's another way of asking you to come up with a linear equation. We've been told that she suspects there's a linear relationship, so we need to come up with a linear equation. And the equations we're working with in year 12 is y equals a plus bx. So we need to find the least squared regression line for this relationship. Now it is very tempting to jump in and draw a scatter plot, create a line of best fit, but really that's not complex work. That's considered to be part of the year 10 syllabus. So we want to move beyond that and demonstrate that we've learned the skills for grade 12. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a model using my calculator. Let's enter this information onto our Casio calculator. I did talk a little bit in the last video about different types of calculators and how they use linear regression. So I'm using the Casio again today. I'm gonna to go to mode two for stat and then two again, and I'm gonna enter this information. But before I do, I need to decide what's the explanatory variable and what's the response variable. Well, it would make sense in real life that if I had a smallish party with not many people, they would make a lot less mess and there'd be a lot less cleanup of food and dishes than a really big party. So I'm guessing that the size of the party is probably gonna determine or have a relationship or have a bearing on how long it takes to clean up. So I'm gonna use my explanatory variable as the size of the party. So don't always assume that just because it's listed first, that that's your X coordinates. It's not always the case. So we're gonna enter these as our X values into the column. We're gonna do this quickly together. Hope you're working with me. And you should be able to do it as quickly as me. And if you can't by now, then you probably need to practice a little bit more. Okay, over to our Y values now. We've got 123 minutes, 45 minutes, 79 minutes. Hard to read without glasses on. 90, 102, 60, 68, and 145, and then enter that. I can clear that out now with the orange button down here. Click over to the shift button. Number one is my statistics function. Five tells me all of what I need to know to work out what the model is. So I've got A here, one, a equals 8.55 approximately and clear that off again back to shift one option five option two and I found the value for B 1.26 so I can actually now insert that into an equation let's pop that back up on the screen and I found my values A and B so my equation is Y equals 8.549 plus 1.262 X and so now I've found the model. So I've done that part of part A, the red part. Let's look at the next part of the question. They want us to make predictions for a party of 200 people. So what I'm gonna do is consider that 200 people would be my X coordinate. I'm gonna substitute that into the equation wherever I see X. Use my calculator again to work out that it would take approximately 260 
0.95 minutes, which is four hours and 58 minutes approximately. So that would be how long it would take to clean up a party of that size. Okay, now I need to comment on the reliability of that prediction. Well, we know that we've been just doing some extrapolation because the maximum party that Amy's actually catered is 100 people. So she's really got no data for a party of that size for 200 people. So based on this model, she's expecting it's gonna take her over four hours to clean up. But how reliable is that prediction? Well, we can say that even though there's strong correlation, R equals 0.95, and you would pull that off your calculator on that number five reg button, and there's an option there to look at R. So you could actually use your correlation here to talk about that reliability, because we've got very strong correlation. However, because it's extrapolated well beyond anything Amy's ever experienced or measured, it is gonna be still very unreliable for making predictions. If on the other hand, um, Amy was interpolating with her uh, calculation and her equation, then you could say that the, the model was fairly reliable because R equals 0.95. So that that means that there's very strong positive correlation. Alternatively, if you were interpolating, you could also look at R squared, the coefficient of determination. Simply you would um, multiply 0.95 by 0.95 and talk about the variability in the time being caused or being um, affected by the number of people on the x-axis. So you could also talk about R squared as part of your comment. However, it really isn't very effective to talk about that when we're looking at extrapolation because the fact that it's extrapolated pretty much wipes out anything to do with R and R squared as being super important. Let's look at part B now. They want us to determine if the model adequately describes a linear relationship. So you should be thinking now, okay, is this model that I've created really a straight line? Even though I've got this strong correlation, is it really a straight line or does the model start to fall apart at some point and become nonlinear? So the way that we do that is to develop a residual plot. So our very first step is we need to add to the table. First of all, what we're gonna do is take our equation y equals 8.549 plus 1.262x and we're gonna substitute each of those x values into the equation, x being the size of the party, and we're gonna work out a prediction based on the equation. Now, you'll notice that I've actually switched around size first now and time second, because time is what actually happened in real life with Amy's experience, and if she uses her model, that's what's predicted underneath. And that's what we need those two rows, those bottom two rows to work out our residuals. So now we're gonna add another row to the table and calculate the residual. And you would remember from previous videos that our formula for the residual is residual equals the actual value, that's the value that Amy recorded, take away the prediction. And the prediction is what we developed using the model. So if I subtract, for example, 80 take away, sorry, 123 take away 109.51, I'm gonna get 13.49 and I've done that all the way across those particular values. Now it's time to plot the residual plot because I've got the residuals now. And this is what it looks like. You can see that on your screen. Now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I did that because I haven't actually shown you how to plot a residual plot in any of the videos. However, if you know how to create a scatter plot, then you know how to create a residual plot. What goes on the x-axis comes from our x values or our explanatory values. So I'm still keeping size on my x-axis and that's these numbers here. Plotted on the y-axis is gonna be my residual numbers. So they'll be positive numbers and negative numbers. And that's these ones shown here. So they're the only numbers I need to plot against one another. And it really is the same principles as you would follow if you were drawing a scatter plot. You still need a title. Your title will be a residual plot. You still need axis titles. So on the x-axis is the same value as what you would have had as a title for your explanatory variable. And on the y-axis is the word residuals. Now we need to talk about as well whether what we see on this residual plot actually indicates a linear relationship or a nonlinear relationship. And I can see that, that that's completely random. And that's what we wanna see if we wanna demonstrate that there's a linear plot. So I'm saying because the residual plot has a random pattern, the model can be confirmed as being appropriate for describing a linear relationship. 
on the flip side, if I saw something that if I drew a pencil line through it, that it would roughly form a parabola or roughly form an exponential, then I know straight away I have not found a linear relationship because it's not random. Well, that's all we have time for on the video today. I'm so glad you were able to join me and thank you so much for watching our bivariate data series. I do look forward to hearing your comments. You're free to email me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com and also you can come and subscribe to us now on Facebook. Have a lovely day.